All I can say is that the fake news just doesn't, doesn't get, get it, do they? Do they? So Elon Musk, we love the guy, right? Elon Musk is changing the world for the better, taking us to the moon, taking us to uh, space, and preserving free speech on the Internet. Uh, what's not to like? He's awesome. Oh, now they're finding out he's conservative, and the fake news hates that. So a guy who's been around for decades is suddenly the worst person in the world. He's racist. Oh, and he's sexist. Just ask him. The billionaire Elon Musk is denying allegations in a news report that he had sexually harassed a flight attendant on a private jet back in 2016. The website Insider published an allegation that he sexually harassed a SpaceX flight attendant in 2016. The unnamed accuser says Musk pr uh, propositioned her for sex and SpaceX paid a $250,000 settlement for her silence. Wow. Again, <laughs> we knew him for decades, and all of a sudden, now that he's, well, he tweeted this about Hillary Clinton. Remember Hillary Clinton pushing the Russia hoax? He says this, you are absolutely correct. That tweet is a Clinton campaign hoax, which their campaign lawyer is undergoing a criminal trial. Somebody was pushing, hey, Hillary put out so much disinformation about Trump in the 16 campaign. Why are those tweets, why don't they have a little warning? Why haven't they been removed? Elon Musk says that's right, so they come after him. Last week he was a racist, now he's a predator. Brigitte Gabriel, you know her, she's amazing, the conservative, she writes, Elon Musk has been a public figure for 25 years without a blemish on his record, and in 24 hours of being a Republican, he was accused of sexual harassment. The list goes on and on. Kavanaugh, Justice Thomas, uh, tell you, anytime you get a little bit too, uh, too big for your britches, They'll come after you. It's the trial of, I don't want to say the century, but it's a big deal trial. So this is Michael Sussman, the former Hillary Clinton campaign attorney. Um, it looks like he was a big mover in the Russia hoax. He's been accused of lying to the FBI. It looks pretty cut and dried. I think he's going to go down. Uh, he was getting information from a tech executive and representing the Hillary Clinton campaign and going to the FBI and saying, hey, I'm here on my own. Oh, by the way, Robbie Mook apparently was leaking this bogus information to the media. The information being Donald Trump is working with the Russians and we see the computers are talking to uh, computers in Russia, the Trump Tower. It was all fake. It didn't make any sense. It was not true. Take a look at what he said to the FBI. Uh, I have information. I'm coming on my own, not on behalf of a client or company. Just want to help the bureau. Yeah, I'm just a good citizen. I just want to help the Bureau. And the FBI is like, come on in. When can you make it? Right away? No problem. Uh, looks like he's in big trouble. We'll see what happens. It's not getting nearly sufficient coverage. Which brings me to Donald Trump, the target of the Russia hoax. You know, it's amazing. You may have heard him say, I am the least racist person you'll ever meet. And it's true. I've noticed a lot of candidates, particularly Republican candidates, they may not have much in the way of diversity in their background in terms of friends and associates until it's time for the campaign. It's not true for Donald Trump. For years, many years, he's had people, friends of, from all over the place. Here he is with Muhammad Ali and Rosa Parks receiving a civil rights award. Now, isn't that amazing, right? A guy who was with Rosa Parks, they're going to say, is a racist. Who else? as he'd been with over the years, before, way before he was interested in politics. Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton supporting their causes, and they supported him. Next, Michael Jackson, who, by the way, he still speaks fondly of. And the allegations against Michael Jackson, I believe, are fake. And, well, uh, is that Snoop Dogg? Yes, it is Snoop Dogg. And, of course, Oprah Winfrey. But everywhere Donald Trump went, uh, do you condemn white supremacy? Do you condemn white nationalism? The question is insulting. It really is. As if we wouldn't, as if we don't. I don't like the question. And I actually don't like the way so many Republicans are handling it. Take a look. This happened yesterday on the Sunday shows. Do you personally think it's important for political leaders, particularly in your party, to condemn white nationalism? Well, clearly we ought to all condemn 
any hatred. We ought to con condemn any white supremacy. We I mean we we've got to figure out how to come together. We ought to judge people by their character, not the you know, not their skin yeah. color. Uh, so we've got to figure out how to bring people together. So you would tell all Senate Republicans running for election that they need to each and every one of them condemn white nationalism. Well, I tell people what I believe. But you would and advise what's them. You, you think of their state? But I can tell you, I'm clear. So oh, the if, they, is yes. if they ask me, I would say, for, "Be clear. Be clear." All right. I love Rick Scott, but uh, we need something better than this, and he can do better. Yeah, white nationalism, sure, we condemn it. Hey, how about asking every Democrat, do they condemn Antifa? Do they condemn um, Black Lives Matter, a socialist organization? Put it right back on them. Of course, white supremacy is abhorrent. But why isn't the other side held to the same standard? Condemn Antifa, condemn that terrorism. They never are. And it's not right, of course.